Okay. Here we go. All right, we're back. This is pretty much where we left off. I just changed a few things to bring it back to the recipes theme with a link yeah. here, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I actually noticed while uh, you were shopping for groceries or whatever, I noticed that Gatsby has this interesting thing. So if you if you want to use Gatsby Cloud, which you, you asked earlier, like, how do they make money, right? It's yes. with Gatsby Cloud because I clicked on this thing. What did I click on? Mm. There was some sort of banner at the top. It said, new, get 20 times faster builds with Gatsby Cloud. I'm like, yeah, interested. Let's mm -hmm. have faster builds. And then it's like, okay, a bunch of stuff. It's like, you know, 20 times faster builds here. No more timeouts. Um, just more features, basically. So get started for free. Okay, cool. I don't have a Gatsby site yet. I tapped that. And I clicked that. I'm not on a mobile phone. I'm on my computer. And then I noticed of all these categories, like you can have a blog. I guess the recipes is kind of like a blog, right? Mm hmm So we can choose a blog with Cosmic JS or a blog with Contentful or a, 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 um, an e-commerce website with Snipcart and Data C, Dato CMS, which I thought was interesting because it's like an e-commerce site. Like how far can we go with this? Yeah. You know? Yeah, let's speak there. Do you want to try that? Yeah, it's more reasonable for All someone right. to want to build a site. To let's, build see, a... let's see what happens when we do this because I'm also learning. So, so. so, okay, it wants to know where to put it. So I'm like, well, I've already got a GitHub account. It's like, yep, that's your GitHub account. Can we put it there? I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? Confirm password. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is that easy? Like, it's already... So far, um, yeah. what should we call your new project? Uh, let's see, let's see. So it's e-commerce, right? Store, let's just call it store. My store. My store. My dreamy store, okay. My store, dream store, how about that? Dream store. Dream store, yeah. There we go. So we'll create this repo under your personal GitHub account and want to host on a GitHub organization. No, I don't, so we'll go ahead and do that. Next. It's creating the repository for us on GitHub. Mm -hmm. This is great because this just makes it even easier. There's there's less steps for you to be aware of now. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, now we need to connect to Dato CMS. I'm like, okay, connect, but I don't have an account yet. Authorize. Now Dato's like, ah, oh, you need an account, of course. So I guess I'll sign up. Oh, you need to sign up. Oh, you already have it. Well, I have like autofill, but yeah. Okay. Uh, there's no company. I'm just going to do this. Uh, it's not password. Oh, yeah. Email. Yeah. What's the point of autofill? I'm just going to delete it. Yeah. Let's just see if it'll let me do a dumb password. Company. Uh, no. Just sign up. Okay, so now we're signed up. Uh huh. And I'm gonna log in. Authorize new new projects. Okay, good. Let's see how seamless this is. So Gatsby seems to not know what just happened. Let me click here again to see if we can fix this. Yeah, there we go. Connected. Okay, start my site. Mm, what we're going to sell doesn't matter honestly just want to see this working okay so successfully set up a Gatsby provisioned snip cart whatever that is mm -hmm. manage your content here and your contents or your project name is dream store your mm -hmm. repository is here at github.com mm -hmm. sure enough here it is Got a bunch of files here, got a readme, everything. So let's go ahead and just clone this to my local machine. Dream store, okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and just update, uh, open that up in Visual Studio Code. Here we are, and 
because this is a node project, the first thing that you need to do mm. is do like npm install. But it looks like they have a yarn file here, which means they're using oh. yarn, they're not using npm. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do npm install dash g yarn. Yarn dash V, I, this should work. I should be able to, I don't normally use yarn, but I think you just run yarn instead of yarn install. And sure enough, here it goes installing all of the packages. Okay, so the readme over here says, um, to run this project locally, install all the dependencies of this project with yarn install. Okay, I guess that's what I'm doing right now. Add an env file containing the read-only API token of your Dato CMS site. Uh, really? Okay, an env mm, file. Okay. That might be difficult. Okay, let's do it. Is it working? I don't know yet. Hold on. So, oh, you mean like is it already published? Okay, let's see if it works. I don't think it will until I add this API token, maybe. Um, oh, let's see. Let's that's see. yarn thing is spent. Well, I came here from somewhere, right? I came here from here and then I clicked this link down here, but it's actually saying that I can manage my content here. I guess we didn't really publish it yet. I'm going to copy this for a second. Finish. Okay, so it says set up hosting. Last published one minute ago here. So it looks like it's already, look, it's done all this build stuff. It's uploading mm -hmm. to Gatsby Cloud right now. So yeah, it's publishing. Huh. Let's just, uh, I guess wait for that build to finish. In the meantime, we can try and run this locally, which I'm gonna do by doing yarn develop. Because it says here, to run the website in your development mode, just yep, run yarn develop. I'm like, okay, that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. It says it had a problem, it looks like. Yeah, it doesn't like it. It says something is wrong. Hmm. That's disconcerting. Off to a great start. I don't get it. It's what's, broken. What's that's, wrong? that's what it's, let's see. There says there's an error in the GraphQL query. So it's saying something about, um, I don't know what Graph GraphQL query it's talking about. Maybe this one? This query here. It doesn't like Gatsby data CMS sizes. It doesn't like that. Isn't because the yarn stuff like going wrong? I don't think so. Because we're trying to change it. Let's see how the publish is going. Cause if that works, well, it should work. Oh, here we go. Two of seven. We're getting somewhere. It's already uploaded it to the cloud. It's running some lighthouse reports, which are going to basically give us reports on like how fast and performant this website is. <laughs> All these tasks took, um, well, 77 seconds to install dependencies. Everything else was really fast until it got to uploading to Gatsby. That took 120 seconds, 127. Mm -hmm. And now it's done with that. So it's done. It says performance is 88, accessibility is 96. Best practices is 79. I don't know why these numbers are not 100. It seems to me like if you're gonna, like if it were better, if it were a better product, these should be 100 because that would mean you have the best performance. Yeah, it's pretty low. But if I click full report, it's gonna tell me why the performance isn't that high. I bet you this is really good performance compared to really? most, compared to most websites probably, yeah. <laughs> So let's see here. First content paint is very fast, 1.2 seconds. First meaningful paint, 1.2 seconds, good. Speed index, 1.7. So all the speed stuff is initially very good. 
but then your 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 computer processor is basically still working until 4.5 seconds and that's not good and then you can't actually interact with the page until five seconds after hitting it and that's not good either that means yeah that's very low that means after 1.7 or 1.2 seconds you're gonna see some button right Mm -hmm. But if you click it, nothing will happen until you wait another three seconds. Oh, that's bad. It gives you a little breakdown here, too. Interesting. Hmm, this does not look good, to be honest. I don't know if I like this. Hmm. Well, let's see what it looks like. So, full report. Okay, that's all done. Apparently, if we go to this URL, we should see our build. Oh, no, that's not going to take us there. How do we get to the to the website? Site settings. Oh, here it is. Well, that's that's my GitHub repo. Um Let's see. Yeah, I mean, it, it needs to be published somewhere, right? So they built it, but where is it? That's what I want to know. Okay, so I think this is it. We need some sort of hosting solution in order to have it live somewhere. Mm -hmm. So we can choose from these different services. Um, I've used Netlify before. But I've not used any of these other ones. I know about Fastly. I've definitely heard about Fastly. Um, I actually like Netlify. I'm going to try that. Okay, Netlify deployment site name Dream Store. Create. Okay, it's done. It says Gatsby Cloud can automatically deploy each site's each site build to a CDN host of your choice. Just connect and you're good to go. Okay, okay. let's go. So that's what I did. I connected, um, mm -hmm. but I still don't know where it is. So let's go to Netlify and see if we have a link. Netlify. Here it is. Site has not yet been deployed. Oh. Yeah, I think it's because we need to trigger another build or something. Dato API token. Let's see. Maybe we can just tell... Um, just tell Gatsby to trigger another build. That's what I want. So I'm going to hit builds. Mm, general, I guess. This is not working locally, so I'm going to kill that. Okay, if a CMS is not available through our automated integrations, trigger new builds whenever you publish content by sending a post request to this webhook URL. Okay. So a post request, huh? Mm, so if I was to just paste that URL in my address bar, that's a get request, that's not a post request. So that's not gonna do anything. It says cannot get that. I need to How post- How can we fix that? I need to do a post, so I'm actually, there's probably a way to do that from the CLI. CLI post URL. Uh, sure, let's try that. So we're gonna do curl, let's see if that even exists, curl. Yep, we've got a curl command. Curl dash x post this guy. Hey, maybe that worked. Oh. Let's see.
Look, it worked. Haha, <laughs> that was instant. It says dreamstore.netlify.app. Yeah, that was let's, fast. Let's open that up. I was next. Oh, look at that! Check it out! <laughs> oh, how cool is it? I mean, it's pretty ugly, but... <laughs> yeah. I've got a full cart and everything. Let's buy some socks. It's okay. like 2,000 websites. Yeah, I think they purposely <laughs> did that. <laughs> yeah, but still, it's vintage. Okay, I'm buying something. And it's on fashion. I'm going to buy two pairs of these socks. They're just so yellow. Next step. Cool. Put all my stuff. Oh, now everyone knows where I live if they're watching the video. I need to not publish, <laughs> oh, yeah. I need to not publish this. Oh my god, and your phone. <laughs> oh, now they know my credit card number. Oh, that's great. They didn't even hide my... Okay, that's not even my credit card number. That's ridiculous. That's a testing number. Okay. Next. Okay. It's called Las Vegas. All right, let's place that order. Boom. We have not been able to validate your order. Looks like some product prices might have changed. Okay, I have to admit, this, this e-commerce site looks pretty crappy. Why? I mean, it just doesn't look good. So, you might be able to, like, go to, like, monstertemplate.com. Monstertemplates.com. And you can just, like, peruse this to find... Uh, website builders, huh? No, website templates, e commerce oh, yeah. templates, and then hmm, these are very specific. Uh, I don't know. Let's try like Shopify themes, okay? Because some of these are going to look really good. Like this, underwear. Check that out. Anyway, you've got um, lots of themes that you can shop around for, and they're going to look way better than this one, that's for sure. Hmm. I'm not sure if I like the engine behind it, though. So let's go back to our site that works. How about that? Oh, okay. I'm going to close this. We, yeah, saw, sure. we, we saw how we published something through the cloud. That's great. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's tricky, but now we know. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I'm going to back out of here. We're going to go back to that Gatsby documentation. Oops, I was looking at some other TypeScript stuff earlier. Where did we leave off? I think here, deploying a Gatsby site, right? So mm -hmm. it wants us to, to do this, okay? It says, open up a shell and npm install dash dash global, which is the same as just dash g, search. Surge is another service, kind of like Netlify. They do hosting of static websites. Mm -hmm. So that's done. I should be able to, oh, Surge login email, password. Oh, I'm pretty sure I have a Surge. Not the drink. <laughs> okay, let me paste my password. I created a Surge account months ago. So I'm logged in. Okay, now I should be able to say Gatsby build. Might take a little while. It wants me to run ls public to see that I have files in my public folder. As you can see over here on the left, there's a bunch of built you, files. Yeah, you have a lot, but yeah, not lots, mine. Lots of files. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Index.html files right here. I mean, it's it's all compressed. Like they took all the new lines away. 
So it's all on one line. <laughs> but if I turn on word wrapping, uh, hmm? ah. toggle word wrap, you'll see that all of it is just a bunch of content. But yeah, it's more efficient if you take away all the new lines. So that's what they did. Okay, so we have stuff there. Now let's try it. Let's say surge public. Uh, hold on, where's that gonna go? Note that you will have to press the enter key after you see the domain sumname.surge.com information in your command line. Okay, so surge public, and it says, where do you okay. want to put this domain subsequent trip.surge.com? Can I say dream, um, can I say dream store? search.com aborted you do not have permission to publish to dream store why maybe it's taken yeah i don't know um let's see surge.sh surge.sh i think we have to actually create some sort of a like reserve some sort of a subdomain first oh so let's see Mm -hmm. or it just chooses one for us i think that's what that was because it said oh here we go macho war does search dot sh fine let's do it oh yeah done macho war does search dot sh let's go there <laughs> okay macho war does search dot sh recipes about I just wanted to collect some of my favorite recipes and put them all online. Done. Yeah. Fast. I mean, there's nothing to download, so of course it's fast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that was cool. Okay, so we got a site, and it's actually published somewhere. No, not somewhere. It's in the, our address. No, but yeah, it's it's live. It's on the internet. It's not. Yeah. It's not just on my local machine. Granted, if you actually had a store, you would probably want to not have it at machowar.search.sh. Yeah, we're but, online. But that's cool because if you want to buy like a .com or something, you can absolutely do that and then just publish there instead. Yeah, sounds good. I think even with search, you can do that. So if you go search.sh, let's see, docs. Yeah, there's all sorts of documentation here, but it basically says... Mm. Hmm. Redirecting the www version of your domain. Yeah, you can definitely do some stuff here, but I'm not going to dive too hard into this right now. Let's go back to Gatsby. And we've done that. What's next? Okay, you learned about Gatsby starters, JSX syntax, components page components, uh, react props. Yeah. Okay. Now let's move on to adding styles to our site. Okay. Mm, yeah. That's the fun part. Mm -hmm. So it says, welcome to part two. Um, that's some tutorial. Oh, how to style stuff. Okay. We already created the new site. Yeah. 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 Adding styles it says create a CSS file in your new project. It says to create a styles folder. So right here in the source folder, I'm gonna create a new one called styles, right? And then it wants me to put global.css there, which I've done, okay? Mm-hmm, yeah, And let's then go do ahead it. and put some stuff in there. Okay, so I'm gonna say HTML, background color, Lavender, oops. Yeah, lavender blush. I don't know what color that is, but we'll find out. And then we have to include that style sheet in Gatsby browser. Okay, so we're gonna create a new file right here at the root called Gatsby browser. It says .js, but I've already, I when you were gone, I um, I installed a TypeScript plugin, so I'm gonna do Gatsby browser.ts. I wanna see if this works. 
Okay, so okay. TS is for TypeScript, JS is for JavaScript. Mm -hmm. I'm actually a TypeScript developer, mostly. Okay, so we want to import the styles in here. Okay, so let's do that. Import dot slash source slash styles slash global dot CSS. Okay. Yes. Did that. Now let's start the development server. I've uh, I've created a shortcut. Let me show you how I did that. There's these scripts here in the package.json in the in the folder root, and it, this used to say develop, so you could run like, you could run npm run develop, and it would literally run Gatsby develop for you, but I wanted it to be a little quicker, so I renamed it dev, and so now I can just say npm run dev, and that should run my development server, and it does. So, so if I go back, you don't have a lot of work, right? Because you've done that. What? We don't have too much work to do, except for choosing colors and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna refresh this page. Now I am not convinced that the styles worked because if I view the page source, this is white. That's not lavender brush. So I'm gonna view page source and see what happened. So we've got, um, let's see here, we've got this JavaScript file, what is that? Socket.io, oh okay. We've got a common JS file, right, but we don't have any, we don't have any CSS here, so I might have read that document too quickly. <laughs> oh my. So let's see. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not working. What did I not do? It might be because I named it .ts. Let me rename it back to .js like I've expected. Maybe that's, I didn't set it up right. So let's start that over. No, that does not look right to me at all. Hmm. So, yeah, I'm going to just kind of undo a lot of this stuff that I put in there when you were gone. Um, I'm just going to delete these files. Gatsby config. Gatsby browser we can keep. And uh, that's it, let's see if this works. Hmm, doesn't like that. Use Gatsby clean to remove any cache elements. Okay, Gatsby clean. Dev. I just made things more confusing by playing around. Okay. Just clean it. Just clean it. It's not happy with this at all. There's not a page yet at slash. Doesn't make sense. Oh, because I renamed it index.tsx. Yeah, okay. Let's rename it all JavaScript. Okay. Going back to JavaScript. I just had to make it more complicated, didn't I? Refresh. Yes. Now we've, oh. got, we've got our page again, but it still doesn't look lavender. That looks solid white to me. Yes. Correct me if I'm wrong. Something is not right because this says import source styles global CSS. This should be, that's what it told me to do. So let's see if I read that too fast. Okay, it says uh, adding CSS. Okay, so it says go ahead and put 
this CSS file in a styles folder, which I did. That's exactly where my styles exist. Okay. I did HTML background color lavender blush. Oh, you know what? I missed a D. I missed a D. Oops, I didn't need to kill the server, but I did. That works. Okay, we've got lavender now. Sorry. Oh, it's very bright. Now I'm wondering if I even needed to delete the TypeScript stuff. If I restore that. And then rename these TypeScript again. Yeah, that works. So TypeScript was definitely not the problem. My dog is freaking out. Let me see what's going on. I'm back. My, I gave my dog this huge bone. It's like the size of my brain, the size oh of my, my head. God. And she's been <laughs> gnawing. She's only 30 pounds. She's been gnawing on it for like the last hour. 30 pounds? <laughs> it's a lot. She's, she's small. She's like a mid-sized uh, dog. She's not like a full, large dog or anything. Hmm. So, yeah, that works. Good, good, good. We're on the right page now. Okay, so yeah. we've got CSS, using component scope CSS. So far we've talked about the more traditional approach. Okay, so now we're gonna use CSS modules. This is interesting. I've used these before, so. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so what it wants us to do is to create a container component. So we're gonna create a new folder called components and we're going to put a new file in there called container.js and mm -hmm. this is a react file uh, actually container.tsx i'm not doing javascript anymore i'm doing typescript files so import react from react import container styles from dot slash okay New file, uh, container.module.css. Okay, now we can go back here. So I want to import this from container.module.css and then export default children div class name equals container styles dot container. Children go here. This is not unlike what we did before. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, so it's un we are using TypeScript, so it's a little bit confused because in TypeScript you would do it like this. You would say const uh, container react dot function component. I think just that's it actually, and then save it. And then we would export default container. Hmm. It doesn't like that. Um, so there's this one TypeScript thing that, um, let's see if this works. I'm gonna do global.d.ts declare module star. 
CSS, I think. I think that's how you do it. Ultimately, yeah, that worked. It, I just wanted to tell TypeScript to not freak out when it sees that I'm trying to import a CSS file into a TypeScript oh. file because TypeScript is literally, you know, essentially JavaScript, right? And you can't put mm -hmm. CSS in a JavaScript file. So I'm importing this CSS file and then all those build tools that are under the hood that you don't really know about, you know, how they're, how they're working under the hood, uh, they're gonna basically take this CSS path and they're going to look inside of the CSS file and kind of just insert what you need for you. You don't have to worry about it, basically. One less thing oh, to yeah. worry about. So this is CSS, just like we saw before. But this time, we're going to target this container class. And we're going to say margin 3 rems uh, auto. This is like a relative EM unit. It's like the size of the letter M on a web page is considered a EM unit. Mm -hmm. don't, don't worry too much about it. You can look up CSS later, but we're going to do max width 600 px. And so we've got a CSS file. We've got a TypeScript file. And if I'm not mistaken, if I say container styles dot, nope, doesn't work. There are some stacks that are so cool that there's some plugins actually that you can install that will tell you from TypeScript, it will tell you exactly what classes are in this file. So when you type container styles dot, it will tell you container. And so that you know that you're importing the right, that you're referencing mm -hmm. the right one. But unfortunately, yeah. it, it doesn't have that information here yet. Anyway, oh. so that's done. So we've got CSS being imported into a container component. And now it wants us to use the container component in our about, wait, let's see here. We're going to create a new page component by creating a file at source pages about CSS modules. Fine. About CSS modules.tsx. Let's just copy it. about CSS modules equals react dot function component. Ah, uh, why is it freaking out? Isn't that exactly what I did over here? Yep, I did. Oh, I, I need to use a colon, not an equal sign. Yeah, that'll do it. Okay, so no different. We just have an H1 tag and a P tag, but we're wrapping it in this new container that we just created. And as a result, we have a new page, or at least we should, if I go to slash about CSS modules, and sure enough, we do, and the container has, I guess, this margin and a mm -hmm. width. So if I inspect this, if I right click on this and inspect, Um, and yeah, you can like hover over different things and it'll show you it highlighted up there. Where's the container? This is the container right here. And sure enough, it says container module, margin three rem auto max width 600. See if I, if I toggle the margin on and off, you can see what kind of changes it makes just moves it around a little bit. Anyway, that's that. What's next? Hmm. What else? It has a lot of CSS it wants us to dump in here. 
It wants us to create a list of people with names, avatars, and short Latin biographies. So we need to create a user component and style the component using a CSS module. So it wants us to create a CSS file right here. That's kind of weird, but whatever. So about CSS modules dot module dot CSS. And then it wants us to copy all this CSS in there, just like that. And then we need to import that CSS file. Right here. What's happening? Well, it was complaining that I was importing the styles, but I wasn't actually doing anything with them. So that's it. I'm just reading their documentation here, trying to see what it's trying to tell us. I'm, I'm going to skip this a little bit because it wants us to create this component directly inside this. Okay, I guess we'll do that. So it wants us to create a new component called user. So we can do that right here. Const user react.function component equals just like this. And then we can say div class name equals styles.user. Mm -hmm. And then it wants us to put an image in here. IMG SRC equals props dot avatar. Ugh. Hold on. We'll get back to that. Props dot avatar. Let's do. We're doing TypeScript, so we need to tell it what our what our component props look like. Like what the, what is the shape of that object? What kind of properties can we pass into this component? And so what we can pass in is apparently avatar, which is a string. We can pass in, actually that's it. <laughs> that's it, that's all it is. Class name equals styles.avatar. ugly okay so we're gonna create a new div description you remember these are just CSS targets these class names it's just gonna map over to this um, uh -huh. the CSS file we have avatar description username whatever that's all we're doing here we're just importing those styles and then we're referencing those class names description okay under the hood what it's doing is it's going to actually create these kind of crazy uh, i'll show you later actually props.username So now it's complaining that I'm trying to access these two props that don't yet exist. So I need to add them. So we have an avatar, we need to have a username, and we also have an excerpt. Apparently. Okay, so we've got our component. And it wants us to create two users inside the container. So right here. Yeah, 
and it knows that we can add a string for this. So we got Jane Doe. Oh, I'm just gonna copy paste these. That's too much to type. Okay, so theoretically, yeah, we see these two people. See? <laughs> yeah. But there's no reason that we need to have this this user component on the page. Like we have pages for a reason. Like we want to put pages in the pages folder. We want to put components in a components folder. So I'm going to actually create a new component. Actually, I'll create a new folder called user. And within that folder, I'll create a new file called user.tsx. And then I'm going to just port over this code. Uh, like yes. Yeah, because that's ugly, right? Having everything in one file. So I'm going to take all this stuff. It's going to live in this file. I need to import React. And then I need to import uh, the CSS. So new file. It's going to be user dot module modules dot CSS. And all that CSS goes in here. At least the user CSS. Ugh, I don't like this one bit. Okay, whatever. I'm just gonna copy that over here. Okay, so now in this file, instead of importing this CSS, I'm just gonna say import user from components slash user. And it's not gonna like that because I need an index file mm -hmm. that basically imports, or rather exports, doing this anymore why not no I mean I'm not gonna do it the way that they're doing it anymore <laughs> yeah it's so true. so what I did instead of this export default is I did export const user which says okay I'm gonna export a variable named user and mm -hmm. it's this component that I've created so oh. the index file is just gonna export everything from the user file blindly yep. It doesn't even know what, like I could, I could export multiple things from this file and it mm -hmm. would just export them. And then now if I go to about CSS modules, I can, instead of importing user directly, I can import control space. It will tell me what I can import user. So it's a little bit yeah. more friendly that way. It's easier. Yeah. But it, but depends uh, what components you're going to put it. Okay, so it doesn't like Maybe it's something tricky. that I did. Yeah, okay. You're going to build it anyway. It said cannot re resolve user.module.css in components user. Oh, modules. Yeah, .css. There we go. Okay, we're good. Yeah, so we've got a page and the job of the page is really pretty simple, some simple mm -hmm. content, but we're not gonna be dumping components in here. So we just import the component that we need and use it as many times as we want. Okay, I'm bored, what's next? CSS and JS is composed inline. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I don't want to use style components. No. There, like, I feel there's stuck on that. 
They're stuck on what? On CSS. Well. They talk too much about it. On their like step to step, you know. Hmm. That's my critic. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot to say about CSS. My... Yes, but they might. I don't know. Summarize it. I'm actually quite the fan of post CSS. I've written a number of plugins for it that make things mm -hmm. kind of easy. So, yeah, it looks like they're done though. They're not saying really anything more about this. Now they want to talk about creating a nested layout. Component. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We installed a new site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Typography. What is this? Okay. I don't know. It's probably a good idea to close the terminal windows and project files and keep things clean on your desktop. Then open a new terminal window and run this. It wants us to create a completely new project. I don't know about this. <laughs> Me neither. Let's not do that. Let's just keep adding to what we already have. So I'm going to do, uh, I'm just going to kill the process and I'm going to say just what they're saying. NPM install save dev or save Gatsby plugin typography. I don't know why we need this yet, but it seems to think this is the next thing to show us. So at, edit the Gatsby config JS file, which is right here. This is mm -hmm. one of the cool things about Gatsby. Like I said, it has a lot of build steps related to give you good performance, right? But it's it's configurable, so you can you can add as many plugins into it as you want. I've already added three plugins while you were gone to enable TypeScript support. Mm -hmm. And here we just installed another one called the Gatsby plugin typography. So it says yeah. if you want to enable this plugin, all you have to do is add it right here to the list of plugins after you install it, of course, which we just did. And then it says it's gonna look to source utils typography. We didn't create source utils typography, so what's how do we do that? Okay. What's typography? I don't know yet. I mean it's 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 font face, it's like the font, right? So uh -huh. let's see, let's create a new folder called utils. And then new file called typography.ts. And then we're just going to copy this and paste it in. So it looks like we're importing typography. Uh, save. Dev. I'm using TypeScript, so I'm going to see if we have type definitions for these packages here. Theme fairy gates. Oh, that worked. Theme fairy gates. TypeScript doesn't like us to import packages that it doesn't know. So we have to explain, we have to either install type information for those packages or we have to just lie that's it. why they ask us to erase it. To, to erase what? That part, they say, just erase it all because of that? No, um, I just need to lie to it a little bit and say, hey, you know what? I've got this, this package that doesn't have any type information. And so here, it's not going to freak out. Mm, okay. So anyway, it's just export default typography typography yeah so the reason why type information is important is because I can say new typography and it will show me what kind of stuff I can put in here like I can see oh look I've got all this stuff I can put like a body color in here mm -hmm. I wouldn't know that like I don't want to go to your website and look up your documentation I just want to stay in my editor and figure out what kind of things that I can do so in yeah. this case it's the fairy gate theme it's going to be the settings for this particular typography. It comes with a scale, comes with rhythm, comes with options. 
and I don't know yet how we're going to use these things. So let's find out. npm run develop. Hmm? Oh, npm run dev. My bad. Okay, so it's trying to tell me that if we reload the page and we inspect it, we should see this this right here, the style tag in the head that goes That's to typography.js. Where is it? It's right here in the head of the document. It says style ID equals typography.js. And it has yeah. a whole bunch of CSS in here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so it's like global CSS that's imported for us. So this mm -hmm. font is not what we originally had. This is like a nicer font that it wants us to have for this page now. So it's pretty cool. similar to the other one. Uh, I mean, let's see what happens if we uh, if we just go like this. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to do that. Never mind. Yeah, it, it doesn't look that similar to me because the other one was like a, a serif font. This is a sans serif font. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just, it's big text. I like sans serif. I like Garamond, but <laughs> still... <laughs> So it wants us to go to our index page at this point and change the content a little bit like this. This is no longer recipes, but okay. Whoop to do. We got fonts. Oh, it's small. Oh, we still have this global CSS doing this lavender brush. I don't know if... Oh, right, because they wanted us to start a completely new project, and we didn't do that. Yeah. So, fair enough. Okay, so it just wants us to add some CSS here. Uh... Doesn't look much different to me. Yeah. I'm, I'm not even sure if it's working. Let me see here. I want to inspect this a little bit. Yeah, it's working. Styles are right there. You can inspect your document at any time. You can even change these things. Like, you can add your color right here. And it'll work like I didn't even this is right here in the in the browser like the, the mm -hmm. web server is not doing if I refresh the page it'll go away because I just added it so just showing you okay, okay. typography done Tyco typography done creating a layout component Okay, we're going to move on to learning about layout components. To get ready, we're going to add a couple new pages to our project, an about page, and a contact page. I already have an about page. So let's add a contact page. New file, contact.tsx. Okay, we got an about me. Okay, here's my contact page.
Okay, now what? About me, yeah, 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 yeah. Create your first layout component. All right, so we've got a new component called layout. So let's create a new folder called layout.tsx and oh my bad we're just going to call the folder layout and inside there we're going to create a new file called layout.tsx import react from react export const layout react.function component equals this and what does it look like it looks like this. Okay, we have a layout component. New file index.ts, export all from layout. Okay, what are we gonna do with this component? It says we're going to use it for basically everything. So our about page is going to be import from components layout. Actually, I'm going to make this a little bit easier. I'm going to create an index file at the root of the components. And it's going to say export all from layout export all from user. So this way, if I go back to this user component, I don't have to say components slash user, I just say components. And if I wanna create a new container component and, and make it an actual folder, move those container <laughs> files in there, There, now I should be able to change this as well to, actually I can just delete this entirely and just say export, or I'm sorry, import container comma user from components. See that, so now I have one components folder reference, but I'm importing two components from the same path. Just with a little bit of organization, right? So I've got mm -hmm. a components index file, index exports all the different components and then they each have yeah. their own folder. It's a little bit cleaner that way. Yes, it's easier to find. Yeah, so now this, this about page, it wants me to import my layout component because every page is gonna have a layout. And uh, I think that's what they're trying to tell me here is that we just wanna wrap everything in a layout. And so I did that with the, what page am I on, about? We can do that on the contact page as well. And let's see, how about the contact page? Do we do that? Yeah, about page, contact page. I mean, yeah, that's it, right? So, let's see. Yeah, let's see. But the layout page, mm -hmm. let's see here. The layout page had like CSS baked into it. I don't like that. So I'm gonna create a new file called uh, layout.modules.css and just take this CSS out and say class name equals styles dot dot layout. Ooh. 
Ooh, it doesn't like that. Okay, hold on. These strings it doesn't like. Ah, why is this file looking so dumb? Oh, it's because it's wrong. <laughs> that could be why. Oh. Commas instead of semicolons. CSS likes semicolons. There we go. What's wrong with max width? Ah, that's also wrong. CSS likes dashes. Okay, so this is a legit CSS file now. Layout. I just wanted to show you one thing because if we go back to this, right, and I inspect... <laughs> Uh, actually, let's go to slash about because that's using layout. If I inspect that and I look at, hmm, isn't this the layout about h1? The containing div should be a layout. Yeah, with a class name in it. Where is it? This is not, oh, it's it's not happy about something. It's giving me an error in my terminal here. It says, um, components has no exported member called container. Export all from container. I mean, it should. Let me rebuild it. I'm gonna kill the whole process. Oh no. I'm just restarting it because I think it's confused because it container used to be lowercase container.tsx and now it's not. So I think mm -hmm. it's just really confused. So I, I just started it over and I think it'll be fine now. And okay. it, Gosh, Jim. it seems to be fine now. Yeah. So let's see what happens to that. Still, that CSS class name isn't there. That's not what I expected. see if anything shows up here. If I say, I'm just doing a sanity check here to see, yeah, see data foo equals bar. This is definitely the correct element, but it's not importing these styles for some reason. Hmm. Layout.modules.css. I don't know. I don't know why that would be. Hmm. Any ideas, Louisa? No. Maybe there's something right wrong with the writing. Well, there's no errors. Let me let me do the clean thing, right? The Gatsby clean. I thought we installed CSS modules because we have this, right? This um, no, that was typography we installed. I guess CSS modules just works. Yeah. Maybe that's why they ask us to do everything again. But maybe maybe not. I don't think so. But I mean if, if I go okay, we're here at creating layout components. If I go back up to styling using CSS modules, it says you know, add CSS and then it says Here, this is how you do component scope CSS, and it says use CSS modules. So, import from module. Oh, it's, it is module in the singular. I kept, damn it. Let me rename all these to module, not modules. Yeah, it's always something right or wrong. Yeah, and actually, this one is fine because that's the name of the page, but this one is not because it should be module in the singular. So if I go to this and name it module.css, 
just like this one. Yeah, that should be. All right, rename, or reload. And Louisa, you were 100% correct. It was a naming thing. Oh, you see, I'm paying attention. You are totes paying attention, look at that. No, but what I wanted to show you is this, okay? So normally in a, in a normal kind of 1995 scenario, you have a CSS file that you import, right? And it's always gonna be named whatever mm -hmm. you name it. But in this okay. case, the way that things work is that I have layout.module.css and the name of the of the CSS class is called layout. And then in here I'm saying styles.layout. But under the hood, it's actually mm -hmm. changing the name of this dot layout to layout module dash dash layout dash dash V A R V R. It wants oh. it to be it wants it to be unique. And so the reason, oh, the reason it does this is because you might have your CSS being shared with some other, like let's say you install a third party component and it's already got CSS in it, CSS in it and it already has something called layout. Well, mm -hmm. this way it's actually going to, um, it's gonna make sure that there's not a conflict, that they don't have the same name because it's always going to generate a completely random name for you. So if you see these really weird class names when you're using CSS modules, that's why you see it that way. Oh, I got it now. Yeah, and if sure. I view if I view the page source, you'll see what I'm talking about because you've got a. Um... <laughs> Actually, this is not a good example. Yeah, that's going to be too much. Let's not do that. But suffice it to say, there is CSS, and the class name is changed from layout to layout module dash dash layout, V A R V R. So, if I imported this this layout CSS to a different component, it would probably say different component dash dash layout dash dash blah blah blah. Anyway, it works. The page looks nicer. What's next? So we're gonna go back to nested layout component, creating layout. Okay, we did that. We did all that. Okay. John with that. Hmm. Oh, okay. Now it wants us to go to the layout page. And it wants us to add this H3 right here, it's gonna say my sweet site. Oh, that's easy. Well, yeah, that's easy. We're not getting a lot of progress here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so now every page that you go to, whether it's about or contact, it's always gonna say my sweet site at the top. So that's good, right? Because you don't wanna write that over and over and over again for each page, so obviously. Now it wants us to add navigation links. So we can do that too. And it wants us to create a new list link component to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new component called list link new file, list link.tsx new file index.ts, uh, it's got CSS, yes it does, new file uh, I guess list link dot hmm, dot module, not with an S, dot CSS And the style is display, inline block, and margin right, one rem, fine. Okay, so we import React from React. We import styles from list link.module.css. 
we export const list link, which is a React function component. And the content of this is going to be an li, which is a list item element in HTML. We don't need to add styles, but we do need to add a class name of styles.list link. Uh, hmm. Do I have to do that? Let's see if that works. And then it wants us to, oh, it wants us to import from Gatsby again. So import from Gatsby a link. And I can use the link right here. And it's going to go to props.2. Whoop. Ah. Fine, I needed to find that. There we go. There we go, there's my link. To there, and then props.children. Okay, so explain really quick what happened here not unlike what we've done before export all from mm -hmm. list link we've got an index file that exports everything from list link list link is another component that we've created we've already created like four components by now so nothing new here it's a simple list item element with a class name pointing to that CSS module list link I'm not 100% sure that that's gonna work because it has that hyphen in there, but we'll find out the hard way. And oh then my God. we're importing directly from Gatsby their link component because that's what they do for navigation. And then we're just gonna go wherever we wanna go. So in this case, we're done with the link list component and it wants us to go ahead and go into our layout component. And it okay. wants us to import Oops, let's do that up here. Import from components. Wait, I'm already in components. There, from list link. I'm curious, I'm anxious. Okay, so we've got that. Now, what does it want us to do? Uh, we've already got our styles layout. It wants us to add a header. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna add a header. It wants us to add a link to slash, which is the root of the site. And then it wants us to add, oh, that's my sweet site, what we had before. And then it wants us to add inside this header an unordered list like that bulleted, bulleted list that I showed you before. Um, and it wants to have three list links in here. The first one goes home, the second one goes to about, and the third one goes to contact. Children remains at the bottom. We're good to go. Um, oh, it doesn't like link. Oh, link? Oh, it is link. Yeah, we need to import link from Gatsby, I guess. What's wrong with this? No exported member list link. Huh, I called it link link. <laughs> oh. That's not gonna help. Okay, so that should work. Go back to layout. Anyway, we've copied what they have.
but we still didn't get the CSS in there. So I just need to jump over into this guy. Oh, it's create, ready. We need to create some more CSS. So we're going to have a uh, header margin bottom 1.5 rem. We're going to do link, I guess, link. Text shadow, none. Background image, none. What else do we have? We have the H3 display inline. Hmm. I guess my sweet site. And then the list, the unordered list. So I'm gonna call it list. And that's gonna be do, 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 list style none float right. I think that covers all of it. Yeah, that covers all of it. I just need to go back into this file and start adding class names. So class name equals styles.header. Class name equals styles.link. Class name equals styles.mysuite site. Okay, let's see if that works. Is that a, is that all we're doing? Let's see. Oh my god. So no. This would look a lot cleaner if it was with styled components. To be honest, that's I think why they talked about styles a little bit more. But mm -hmm. we wouldn't have to do this class name thing over and over and over again if we were using styled components. I can show you actually, but um, yeah, this is kind of ugly. But yeah, uh, this should work. So we have my sweet site. If I click on it, I go home. If I click about, I go to about. If I click contact, I go to contact. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad at all. Yeah. Yeah, if you follow exactly what they say, it really helps you. I mean, what they're teaching you is fundamentals, right? Like, if you really look at what they're doing, you can tell exactly how they're doing basic things. And just with that basic knowledge, you already know how to add content, how to create new components, how to add styles to it. The only thing that you need to do at this point is if you want to change colors or if you want to add some sort of behavior, you just go to MDN yeah. and you look it up and you say, oh, okay, so here's all the types of CSS properties that I can add. Oh, hey, here's all the JavaScript functions that I can do. And you just figure it out yeah. as you need it. Because you, ow, you can't possibly know everything. So the, the best thing to do is to understand conceptually how things work. Enough that like yeah. when, it, when it comes to it, you know in the back of your mind that that's possible. And once you know that it's possible, yeah. you know where to look for it. You know where to look for that information. So. Yeah, I think basically they teach uh, what are they offering for you. And then you go there and just look for it. Yeah, and I mean, even, even when people are interviewed for a new job, right? Like if you're a web developer, you go in for a job interview, they're not going to mm -hmm. expect you to know everything. They oftentimes don't expect you to know everything because... They know that normally in your in your normal day to day job you you have the internet available at your fingertips and you don't remember everything you have to look it up all the time, and yeah. even if you're super experienced and you have twenty years of experience, you still look it up just because you want to be sure, and you want to make sure that you didn't miss something or maybe maybe it didn't change, something like that. But 
my point is like nobody expects you to hold the entire internet in your mind. So what what's important is that you have a tool belt and you understand what tools you have available to you. And when you need yeah. a hammer, you reach down for your hammer. And when you need a screwdriver, you reach down for your screwdriver. You just need to know how things are connected and how things work so that when you do need it, you know where to look. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that that's why they have all those tools, like different websites just to help you to get what you want just when you want and you don't need to learn it all because it's impossible. <laughs> it's like impossible to know everything just like the basics so you can have a construction like basis so you just keep going and adding stuff exactly you just need to know you need to get your feet wet you need to understand the basics yeah and then the only way that you can possibly learn all that advanced stuff is through experience because every time somebody tells you to do something and you're like oh i don't know how to do that you look it up. You find out how to do that. And then you've added that to your tool belt. Now you know. Now you know how to do that thing. Exactly. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. You can't possibly expect to like buy a book and then you read the book and now you know everything. That's not how it works. And yeah. you, Also, you don't want to buy like a huge fat reference book that has everything in it because you can't possibly retain all that information. So... The most important thing is to understand the concepts. Yeah, it's like a dictionary. Just use what you need. Exactly. And you use it when you need it. If somebody asks yeah. you something or tells you something that you don't understand, you're like, oh, let me look up that Go. word. Oh, now I understand yeah. what that word means. That's, that's a really good example. Yeah, we don't know all words. <laughs> we just like sometimes need to go check. Yeah. You're very insightful yeah. today, Louisa. Yeah, I I feel assisted. I mean, um, I know if I need something like information, they provide me like billions of informations. Like well, it's just right there, just waiting for me to look. Oh. I mean, yeah, we're totally spoiled in the internet age to be able to do that. 